everyone. This is John Daly. I'm here again with Bernie Goldberg for another episode of the No BS Zone. Today, as you all can see, we have a very special guest. You've seen him on CNN, on Bill Maher's show, and he's a great writer for the Daily Beast. You'll want to check him out there. Matt Lewis, how's it going today, Matt? Hey, I'm doing amazing. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, you have a brand new book that just came out. It's called Filthy Rich Politicians, The Swamp Creatures, Latte Liberals, and ruling class elites cashing in on America. That is a great title. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just throw you on over to Bernie to uh, ask you some questions about it, all right? Well, Sounds first, good. First, Matt, thank you so much for dressing up for the show. I, I really- <laughs> Thank you. I was told, you know, the, this is the internet world. So this is internet casual here. It's my, I'm wearing my Reagan Bush 84 shirt, by the way. That's what it, that's what it looked like. I wasn't sure. Uh, listen, writing a book is hard. I know because I've written five and they were always topics that were near and dear to me, mostly about the media or the American culture. What motivated you to write a book about filthy rich politicians? Uh, this is, the goal is to get filthy rich, <laughs> a filthy rich author. Uh, <laughs> no, it's funny you mentioned that. My, so my last book, I wrote a book that came out in January of 2016 called Too Dumb to Fail. And it was about the state of the Republican Party and the conservative movement. And that one was really, was kind of a labor of love. Like I'd been writing about that topic for a decade. I really knew the topic inside and out. And the book was just a culmination of years of knowledge and and uh, and all that. This book, Filthy Rich Politicians, came together very differently. And Bernie, believe it or not, you're involved in this in this story, even though you probably don't know it. Hang on, what does that mean? So I uh, I got an email from an agent from a a, a, a book agent who had seen me on video or something and said, like, I have an idea for a book that I that I think will be a big hit. This is a book that someone needs to write this book. And the idea was the 100 richest politicians in America. And my agent said, you know, Bernie Goldberg wrote a book 20 years ago. It's not the book, it's not bias. It was another book about the people who were screwing up America. The 100 people who are screwing up America. <laughs> And it was a list. And so each each person who was screwing up America was one chapter. And uh, it was 100 chapters. And the original idea for this book was the 100 richest politicians in America, 100 chapters. That is the original idea that got me excited about this. And I thought, well, look, I'm not an expert on you know money or uh, the, the stock market or any of that stuff, but I could write a chapter on each of the 100 richest politicians in America. And so that was the original idea. Uh, and then it eventually evolved into something different, which is filthy rich politicians. But your idea was, you know, your book, basically the idea was to rip off, <laughs> to rip off Bernie. Uh, and, and that's how I got here. I'll send you wire instructions so you can, uh, <laughs> you can when the you royalties start rolling in, you could, you'll know where to send some of, some of them to. Listen, one chapter in your book is entitled, How the Elected Get Rich. That's a good question. Now, politicians in Congress, for instance, they make a good living. They make over $100,000. I mean, that's not nothing, but it isn't enough to get filthy rich. So how do so many politicians get rich after they get elected? Is there a general, well, is there a general overarching answer to that question there are a bunch of a bunch of reasons and i'll tell you uh you know my book is about how the rich get elected and the elected get rich and i think the second part of that equation as you're alluding to is much more important and i would say say disturbing right i mean everybody knows that rich people have a better chance of getting elected we kind of have accepted that but when people get elected and then get richer that to me is more problematic and there are, there are a bunch of reasons that this happens the first reason is actually not nefarious at all but it's the fact that rich people t tend to get richer you know if, if you get elected and you're rich you're likely to keep getting richer uh based on things like interest and so 
Um, a lot of times when people say, you know, John Hoven, senator from, from North Dakota, got elected 10 years ago and he's doubled his income. Well, like, yes, but that would have happened anyway. Like, he was going to double his income or right. double his right. net, net wealth. Uh, anyway, um, the, the more concerning things have to do with things like, um, by far the worst, I think, is this insider trading, which I think... Um, is pretty obviously happening, you know, and, and it's a bipartisan thing. I could talk about Nancy Pelosi, I could talk about Richard Burr, uh, but members of Congress using no inside knowledge, and sometimes it's for things like land deals, more, more often right. these days it's for stock investing. Um, and then the other one, uh, the other big one I would say, believe it or not, is, is book deals. <laughs> We're talking about getting rich off of books earlier, but you know, it is amazing. And even Bernie Sanders, who's a, a socialist, uh, became a millionaire. And he said, you know, uh, someone asked him, like, how is it that you're a millionaire? You're a socialist. And he said, well, I wrote a best-selling book. If you write a best-selling book, you too can be a millionaire. So, Well, that's that's uh, what, what, what I would call in my country, that's kosher. Yeah. You know, you write a book, you make money, you take your chances, that's fine. But insider trading, if everybody knows it's going on, how, why is it going on? Well, it's going on because all the people who make the rules make the rules. You know, members of Congress set their own their own rules for what is allowed. And uh, in 2012, Congress finally did ban insider trading. Uh, they, they made it up until then. It was essentially legal, but it was called the Stock Act. And so now it is illegal. Uh, to engage in insider trading in Congress, um, but it still happens, or at least these incredibly curious trades happen where politicians have this amazing ability to get lucky. And the problem is that it's almost impossible to prove that they're committing insider trading. And so one of the things that I'm supporting, and frankly, this is a there's a bipartisan effort to ban individual stock trading for members of Congress and their family. I think that has to happen, and that's hopefully the next step. Likely to happen? Well, it's one. Of, it's so funny, Bernie, because everybody is ostensibly in favor of this, but there's always a reason it never passes. It never passes Congress. Everyone says they're in favor of banning individual stock trading. Even Nancy Pelosi reluctantly was forced to uh, come around on this issue. But there's always some sort of poison pill or something in, in, the, in the bill that it never gets done. Do you have one, just one juicy example that people would say, come on, Matt, that, Let that me give you th happen. I'll give you three, but I'll go real fast. Because uh, I don't want to, you know, people can get the book. I don't want to get bogged down. But the first two involve Nancy Pelosi, or more specifically, her husband, Paul Pelosi. Okay. So in 2020, Paul Pelosi invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in Tesla stock. It was actually in a call option for Tesla stock. Five weeks later, Joe Biden signed an executive order mandating that. Federal, state, and local fleets begin transitioning to zero emission vehicles by 2027. What do you think happened to that stock, <laughs> that Tesla stock? You know, you know what, Matt? If John Daly tried doing that, he'd be in the max security prison in Colorado, not where he's <laughs> sitting in Colorado right now. Second example also involves the Pelosi's, and it was when Paul Pelosi exercised options to buy $10 million of Microsoft stock. And this time it was just, I think, two weeks later, the Army announced that they had given a contract to Microsoft to uh, purchase augmented reality headsets. So we're talking about maybe billions of dollars that Microsoft is going to get over decades. Um, so the Pelosi's have a pretty good sixth sense, sixth sense of, uh, of knowing where it's going to go. But it's a Republican thing, too. The, I think the most egregious Republican example is Richard Burr, who, you know, during the COVID pandemic, when people didn't, when most people didn't realize just how bad COVID was going to be, um, Richard Burr dumped 
you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stock in things like Wyndham hotels, the kinds of investments that one would not want to be holding on to, you know, during a global pandemic. But maybe the worst part is that he, Richard Burr, the Republican, he's the, 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 at the time he's a senator and he's the head, the, the chair of, I believe, the Intel Committee. He picks up the phone and calls his brother-in-law. Within one minute of hanging up the phone, his brother-in-law calls his broker and dumps all of his stock. So there you have it. You know, you mentioned Joe Biden uh, earlier. I I've wondered about his wealth. He once said, I entered as one of the poorest men in Congress and I left as one of the poorest men in government, in Congress and as vice president. I believe that's true. I believe that's a true statement. Yet, he's got what looks like an estate in Delaware. He's got a beach house. He's got a classic Corvette. Where did all that money come from if, if, he, if he's so poor? Most of it, most of the money came in three years after Biden left being vice president in 2016. He made about $15 million in three years. And so that is when he really cashed in. Um, now, who knows if he's the big guy <laughs> that Hunter Biden references on that laptop. So there may be more money that we don't know about. But what we do know about is that he made a lot of money in about three years. Um, the is other thing I books? would say is, is that although on, I do- that on books and, and speeches? Books and speeches are a big part of it. Yep, definitely. But he also see, was a teacher, see, so all, allegedly a teacher. Legal. That's all legal, but you wonder how, he had that house before in Delaware, which whenever I see an aerial, it looks like a giant estate. He had that house, didn't he, before? before yeah. the books and I don't get it. Yeah, it's a good question, right? I mean, I would say that, you know, in fairness to Joe Biden, um, right now he makes, you know, a, a typical member of Congress makes $174,000 a year. Um, he was making more than that as vice president. Um, and real estate, you know, in Delaware, when he bought this house 20 or 30 years ago, I'm guessing would have been lower. But yeah, it, it is interesting, isn't it? Uh, it, it? And the one part of the story, too, is it's very difficult to tell how rich politicians are and what their net wealth is because they set the not only did they set the law for things like insider trading, they set the laws for disclosures. And so they're not required to disclose. They, first of all, the money they disclose are in broad ranges. So it might be like he's worth between 200,000 and 800,000 or something ridiculous like that. Um, and then they do not have to report the value of their home, of, of their actual house that they live in. And they also don't have to report what their spouse makes. And so, you know, Jill Biden, I think is like a, a teacher, a college professor. She wasn't making a ton of money, not, not millions, but she's probably pulling in, you know, a hundred grand or something too. So if you if you take Biden's income and Jill Biden's income, you know, when you buy that house 20 or 30 years ago, like maybe it's possible. Well, I'm gonna throw to John Daly now, but I wanna come back in a bit to uh, whether or not he's the big guy and uh, that would account if, if he is. Uh, there's no evidence that he is, but if he is, that might account for some money in the uh, Biden bank account. John, take over. Sure thing, sure thing. So Matt, um, a narrative I, I'm sure you've heard this many, you heard this many times as well uh, from Trump supporters during the uh, Trump years was that um, Donald Trump made, you know, this huge financial sacrifice by serving as our president. You know, he was this very successful businessman who was making killer deals left and right and bringing in all kinds of money. And he selflessly gave it all up to lead our country. Um, and his, his supporters are always quick to point out that he, uh, I believe, well, he's, I don't know if that's 100% true, but he refused to draw a presidential salary. Um, is it true, as far as you can tell, that Trump's financial situation and his earning power suffered as a result of his political career, or has he found ways to capitalize off his presidency and, and his other political activities? So I, I intentionally don't look too much at Biden or Trump in this book. I would say that Biden and Trump collectively 
constitute five to 10% of this book. And I didn't want to do that partly because there's so much written about them. And also because I think that this issue of filthy rich politicians is very pervasive. And if you focus on the top people kind of exclusively, it, it gives the impression that it's that it's just them. Um, I, I am, you know, I think on paper, Donald Trump, you know, has probably lost money, but it's, he, I think he ran for president partly to increase his brand. Um, I think that some of the Russia, Russia gate stuff was overwrought, but I, it seems like he was pursuing, you know, hotels in Moscow while he was running for president initially, like in 2015, things like that. We also know that Trump may not like this, but his son-in-law got a $2 billion investment from the Saudis. Um, we also know that Trump was operating the Trump Hotel while he was president. And uh, there were certainly allegations that uh, people who wanted to court his favor, including foreign governments, might be staying there as a way to kind of launder money to him. So I, um, I'm not one of these people who wants to give Donald Trump a lot of credit for the big sacrifice he made for this country financially. It may be that on his, technically on his disclosure reports, uh, he is less wealthy than he was in 2015. Um, but his son-in-law has a $2 billion Saudi investment as well. Yeah. Well, there's one person you do write about in your book um, is uh, Stacey Abrams. Uh, she's kind of a uh, unique politician in that she seems to have made a fortune off of losing an election. <laughs> she, she lost the governor's race in Georgia in 2018, and she famously refused to concede. Uh, but then she built a brand for herself as an activist against voter suppression. Uh, that made her, as you described in the book, sort of a media darling, which resulted in a book deal, which led to her becoming a millionaire. I see right now, um, Carrie Lake, I think, seems to be going down that same path, almost step by step. What do you think it says about our political culture that there is so much money to be made in portraying oneself as a victim of a corrupt system without having to necessarily prove that the system is even corrupt? Uh, you just have to lose an election, basically. I just think it's, you know, the, the term would be perverse incentives. Um, people, Holly, it's, it's Hollywood for ugly people. And uh, as you noted, maybe the, the most recent step or, or uh, revelation is that you don't even have to win, right? Like it used to be everybody wanted to be John F. Kennedy, Camelot, and glamorous, but you had to get elected. And then once you got elected, you learned it wasn't it wasn't really that glamorous. Now you can be a star uh, without winning. You can lose and claim that the election was stolen from you as, as both uh, Republicans and Democrats, <laughs> uh, Stacey Abrams and Carrie Lake have both done. And you can profit financially and you can get a lot of attention that's the attention economy as they call it so uh whether you get rich financially or you get rich from uh instagram fame it's a real uh, it's a real thing and i think look um whatever gets incentivized you know gets done i mean this this is going to be a magnet that will attract more people to try to get into that space so that's one of the things that I was a little worried about with my book. Um, I, I have all these reforms in the book, right? Like we, I want to ban insider trading. I want to ban stock trading altogether for indi individuals. You could still have a mutual fund or something like that, but I want to ban in individual stock trading and things like that. Um, but to kind of make up for it, I actually suggest we should be paying members of Congress more money than we're paying them. And there have even been some ideas floated that candidates for Congress should be allowed to do things like, for example, pay for their own health care from the campaign while they're running. And I've toyed around with these ideas, but you know, the danger is that you make running for office even more attractive than it already is. And you get these perennial candidates who are basically not even trying to win necessarily, but just trying to get rich and famous. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think we might be seeing a little bit of that in this uh, in this presidential run too. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, throw it back to Bernie. He has what, another question he wanted to ask. Yeah, I'm I'm wondering if you're at all surprised by what we're hearing about Hunter Biden and other members of the Biden family making 
literally millions and millions of dollars with no discernible talent to show for it. Does that, does that surprise you? What, what can you tell us about that that maybe we haven't thought about? Well, first of all, sadly, I'm not surprised. Um, it's a long, <laughs> long history of ne'er-do-well children and brothers who try to cash in off the family name. Um, uh, everybody jokes about Billy uh, uh, Carter, right? Uh, Jimmy Carter's brother. Um, and there's some funny stuff, you know, there was the Billy beer. But one thing I learned in writing this book is that Billy Carter took, I forget how many, you know, hundred $100,000 or something like that from, from Muammar Gaddafi's Libya. <laughs> like, <laughs> unbelievable, scandalous. Um, Donald Nixon, uh, Richard Nixon's brother, um, you know, Dick Nixon uh, in 1960, that election against JFK was so close. And there was a scandal where uh, Richard Nixon's brother, Donald, had, had you know, said, taken a loan that became controversial. And so something, another thing I learned in writing this book is that Richard Nixon, when he actually became president, it came out during the Watergate hearing that Richard Nixon had bugged his own brother, had wiretapped his own brother's phone to make sure that his brother wasn't trading off his name to try to get find it to get rich. Uh, so there's a long history of this. We could talk about you know Roger Clinton. Um, to me, I think it is very clear that Hunter Biden um, is. Uh, is, is a very deeply disturbed, troubled, and I would say scummy person, and that he is clearly trading off of his father's name. You know, I went back and looked at this in 1988, because you know, Joe Biden has been in politics my whole life, and he's been running for president since at least 1988. In 1988, I think it was 20% of the money Biden raised for president went to his family. He paid his family. Now, this was actually legit. It's above board. He paid them to work on the campaign. But he was essentially funneling, you know, I think it was like $11 million or something like that, if you add it up, to his family. So this has been going on a long time. And it's all disturbing and it's all problematic. Um, but the real question actually will be, is Joe Biden the big guy? And that to me is, if, if that is proven, then I think it's, that's the game changer. Well, I, I don't think there's any question that Hunter Biden, oh, I know there's not a question that Hunter Biden is trying to make money and is making money off of his family name. That, that, that's obvious. That's not a crime, is it? Um, it could be, uh, but in and of itself, it's not a crime. Um, it is interesting. I mean, this, this allegation that came out a few weeks ago Bernie, whereby um, you allegedly have bank documents showing that foreign governments were funneling money to Biden family members and that there was an attempt to hide this by setting up LLCs and, right. um, you know, that may run afoul of the law at some point if that is proven. But, but yeah, you're right. I mean, sadly, it's, I think it's just impossible to police. As, as long as there have been powerful leaders, uh, there have been there's been someone related to them trying to cash in off of, of the the name. And by the way, it's not just again, it's not just Hunter. I mean, Joe Biden has two brothers, Frank and James, who are both also cashing in. They're getting paid very overtly, even going and giving paid speeches where they're saying from a dais, you know, like, I'm very close with my brother and I'm gonna to talk to him about your issue. I mean, you know, things like that. Very inappropriate and, uh, you know, one might even say corrupt. Maybe but then the question corrupt. is, is Joe Biden acting on it? And and that's-, that's, that's Well, the that's mystery. the key. That's the key. If, if he's not acting on it and if these, if his son and his brothers are sim simply, using his name to make money that's smarmy but it doesn't sound illegal to me i'm not defending it by any means 
but they're capitalizing on the name Biden. I mean, if it were Hunter Hunter uh, Jones, he'd make he'd be poor. Yep. Well, all right. Anyway, I wish you the best on your book, and I'm going to throw it back to John for a final word. Yeah, I just want to just want to thank you too, Matt. Uh, we really appreciated you joining us. Again, the book for everybody watching here is Filthy Rich Politicians. It's a real eye opener. Um, you've given some some good uh, some good insight into it already. Uh, we hope people check it out. Uh, anything you would like to add or, or plug or anything, Matt? Yeah. So we have a website set up, and it was mainly done for pre orders, but we're going to keep it up, I think, for a week or so after the book publishes. And if you go to Filthy Rich book.com not only can you get the book but um if you if you basically order it there uh and you can basically you can order from amazon books a million wherever fine books are sold uh barnes and noble but if you enter in the receipt code that you'll get at this website filthyrichbook.com you can get an autographed book plate from me an exclusive podcast that we did about the book and also you can download immediately uh, chapter one of the book and start reading. So it might take a couple days for the book to arrive in the mail, but you can go ahead and read the intro and chapter one, uh, a PDF of it. So uh, do that. And uh, thank you guys. And thank you, especially Bernie, for giving us the idea inadvertently for this book. <laughs> As I said, I'll be sending you wire instructions. Yes. So when the royalties start pouring in, you know where to send them. Understood. Best of, best of luck, Matt. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Have, have Thank a great you. day, all right?